145 post meridian level bridge are you still awake or do you slumber under the sheets rich or poor happy or sad i've got your daily dose of beats and tunes and words to inspire thoughts to catch fire stop the crying i can This morning we got a tip off from an informant who used to be a dealer on the North Bar Road. The pilot radio station you've just heard is being run from an industrial estate here. And the building is leased by the younger brother of Brett Sullivan. Brett Sullivan, now there's a name that keeps cropping up. Sullivan runs half the drugs deals in Leatherbridge, but we haven't managed to pin anything on him yet. Radio station. Just a front. Well, the days of pilot radio being a bunch of hippies playing pro call harem are long gone. Sullivan runs all his operations from the radio station and has just taken a delivery of eight kilograms of uncut heroin. Wow, that's going to be worth, what, half a million? At least. Our source reckons the smack is still at the radio station, but he's also convinced that Sullivan will have moved it by the morning. So we're going in, under the pretext of locking down another pirate radio station. If we get hold of Sullivan's stash, we put him away for a very long time. in London. What? You know the one that liked my stuff? No, no nothing. But you know, you've only been with us a couple of weeks, so these people, they like to, uh, you know, hear your stuff over, over a long period of time. We get one crack at this. Are the dogs on the way? You're joking, aren't you? I've had one hour to organise this. OK, uniforms in first, please. Bobs! There's no fault. Zara, you can't avoid me forever. I'm sorry? We need to discuss your forthcoming nuptials. You must be tremendously excited. Yes, yes I am. Wasn't it Shaw who said that marriage is an alliance entered into by a man who can't sleep with the window shut and a woman who can't sleep with the window open? If you say so. Any messages? No, I would have... If you... anyone calls or are there any visitors, will you let me know immediately? What, even if you're with a patient? Especially if I'm with a patient. Well, I don't think that's a very... Just do it, OK? I'd say he's been dead for hours, plenty of injection scars. No, no, but the DI recognised him, James Creighton, third division dealer. Ah, oh, looks like he disobeyed the gun rule of dealing. Yep, he'll become a user. Mm. You planning something special? Oh, I'm meeting with Sapphire again. She's coming round to the house. I thought if we had dinner, it would be less intimidating for her. Yeah. Well, I hope she appreciates all the trouble you're taking. Oh, it's no trouble. Uh, like you said, if I pretend to be someone I'm not, she'll see through me in a moment. So, spaghetti carbonara, simple but fun. Wouldn't you have been better getting a takeaway or something? I mean, you know what young people are like. I'm sure this will be fine. All right, Shane, do the honours.
one of the Bobby Fraxy It's just a big joke, isn't it? Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Charge me for jogging in a built up area, or what? <laughs> <laughs> You've barely said a word all afternoon. Is everything OK? No, I'm fine. Well, something's on your mind. I normally I'd have a, a chat with Cherry, but... Um, have you two had a row? No, no, nothing like that. Just we're having a, a trial separation, I suppose you'd call it. And she's normally my first port of call if I want to talk about anything. But sometimes you can end up relying on someone too much. It gets unhealthy, you know? You're telling me. Oh, Ruth, I'm sorry, I didn't... Really? It's all right. No, that was... Don't worry, you're not showing any signs of borderline personality disorder. And I am an expert. You're winding me up. Just a little bit. I bet you're glad the dreaded first encounter with the in-laws is over. You could say that. <laughs> well, you made quite an impression on Dad. He won't stop talking about you. He keeps asking how we met, where you came from, where you work. He wants to know everything about you. What did you tell him? Well, I said there was time for all that later. Anyway, I just thought you should know. You've got into Dad's good books right away. That's nice to hear. Anyway, I better not keep you. You must be busy. I'll see you later. <laughs> of course. Love you. Gerald's still. We need to get this building searched. No, I've cleaned the air as best I can, but the, the needle's gone in quite deep. When did you last have a tetanus check? No idea. And you should see your GP. It can wait. No, today. He'll arrange for a hepatitis test and HIV test as well. I've arrested Mr. Sullivan on suspicion of supplying controlled drugs. He was running from the scene. I was minding the old business. Oh, don't give me that. Mr. Sullivan, we think you're running a pirate radio station from these premises. Yes, yeah, I'm a new friend here, tells me. <clears throat> and you've gone to great lengths to keep people out. Well, what can I say? This place attracts druggies. It lowers the tone of the whole area. I was actually thinking about complaining to the police, you know. You wouldn't be having any dealings with those addicts, would you? Absolutely not. He was clean. We found a friend of yours today, James Creighton. How oh, is he? Dead. Poor James. <laughs> you see, he was always getting himself involved with things that he couldn't handle. Take him down the station. <laughs> We've wasted enough time. Let's turn this place over. music than compressed noise and radio jingle. It's a place where love and hope and faith intermingle. It's the sound of your soul and mind reaching out to find if there's anyone out there who shares. Hey, what's going on, man? Show's over. Daniel, I've got some paperwork for you to sign. I'm rather busy. Well, Julia said it was urgent, so... You don't look so good. Thanks for the compliment, Daniel. You can't see patients like that. We can't all be as suave as you. Look, you need to go and freshen up. I'll tell Karen to delay your patients. Thanks. Just being professional. If you could keep the grate unwashed at bay for just five minutes, be very grateful. Hey, that's mine! Not anymore, it's not. What's your name? Lucas Jones. Jonesy. Well, Mr. Jones, we're raiding these premises under Section 97 of the Wireless Telegraphy Act 2006. You're running an unlicensed radio station. Not me, man. I'm just the DJ. You're an employee? Sort of. Look, 
I don't give a monkeys about any of this. It's Sullivan I'm interested in. Why, what's he done? We know he's dealing. We just need evidence. Look, I just come and play music. I don't know anything about Sullivan being a dealer. Where do you think he gets his money from? I don't know. I just keep my head down. What, are you blind as well as stupid? Hey, chill. You better start cooperating. Or you're looking at two years inside. Look, you can't do that to me, man. Where does Sullivan <laughs> keep his stash? I don't know. He never... Goodness sake. I'll get the dog. Honestly, all this effort just to get me to whip my top off. I'm worried you're making yourself ill. Since when have you been concerned for me? If the stress is affecting your work. Oh, come on, Daniel. Like you have never brought your personal problems to work. I've told you, I can cope. How much longer? Well, now that Ian's back in the country, it's almost over. Oh, he's back, so it's all starting. Look. Look, I know you have every right to be angry with this man. But... Angry? You cannot even begin to imagine how I feel. Now, you've made your feelings very clear, but I know what I'm doing. So if there isn't anything else... This is pointless. I couldn't agree more. You know, you can pretend all you like, Zara, but this isn't a game anymore. It never was a game. Well, whatever it is, I think you should stop now, before you get in too deep. You're not listening to me, are you? You should go to hospital. Don't you start. And you shouldn't take out your frustration on that lad. Your point is noted, Sergeant. He doesn't seem like a bad kid and he might be telling the truth. Or he could know the location of the heroin and be hiding it from us. How is he? Ah, better, yeah. Fit for questioning? Mm, not yet. No, he was telling me how he used to be bullied at school. He doesn't like it when people shout at him. My heart bleeds. But a panic attack was real. Let me have a quiet word with him. Yes, yeah, some fresh air might do him some good. Uh, whatever. I have to question Sullivan. His lawyer doesn't like to be kept waiting, especially when she knows we haven't got a shred of evidence. I've got a date. Oh, that's good. <laughs> He's, uh, he's called Will, um, mm -hmm. and he's a paramedic. How did you meet? Oh, that's a long story. Uh, but I'm seeing him tonight. And I was really looking forward to it, but then I started worrying, what if he turns out to be like Prince? Prince? Oh, that's another long story. Do you want to be happy? Yes, I do. <laughs> you just have to get on with it, don't you? Everybody gets scared. It wasn't that long ago you were telling me that I should go on a date with someone. All right, fair point. And you said that you were really looking forward to it. Mm. So, the only person who can stop you from having fun is you. OK. OK. <laughs> Why'd you do this, Jonesy? Lots of famous people started on pirate radio. Because you want to be famous? No. I just want to make things better for people. How can you say that when you work for somebody like Sullivan, someone who will sell drugs to anyone, who uses old needles as a deterrent? I'm not actually employed by Sullivan. I pay him so that I can DJ. Tell me you're joking. He said it gets you good exposure. What, and you believed him? Only the other day he was telling me that some guy from a London radio station got in touch, saying how they like my show. Have you ever seen him? Do you know that he really exists? Listen, to somebody like Sullivan, you're just another addict. And he won't be happy until he's bled you of everything you've got. I suppose we should be grateful that you're only hooked on music. Even bought a mixing desk. The other one was useless. The sound kept bleeding from one channel to another. It cost me nearly a grand. Have you listened to a word I've said? But bleeding, man. It's the bane of a good DJ's life. <sighs> I've just come from your radio station, Mr. Sullivan. It's my brother's, I was just helping out there. You've already admitted it's an area frequented by drug users. Is that a question or a statement? I've got a number of witness statements claiming that you are operating a network of drug dealers from that building. Yeah, well, there's people that say the air's flat, but that doesn't make it right, does it? 
If I was going to push heroin onto the streets, I might well use a place like that as cover. Well, as you seem to know so much about it, then why don't you give it a try? On second thoughts, I mean, maybe you're not quite thick-skinned enough, are you? Hey, come on, temper, temper. Why did you run from the scene when you realised you were about to be raided? I didn't know who was chasing me. I thought I was going to get mugged. Now, look, I've been as helpful as I can, so unless you've got some specific charges, then I really ought to be getting off. Why don't you talk about normal people? Why is he still here? The doc says he's not fit to be moved. Has he said where the stash is? This raid's been a fiasco from start to finish. Not going well down at the station. Brett Sullivan reckons the pirate radio setup belongs to his brother. We've got about half an hour to find some evidence of his dealing. Otherwise, the custody sergeant's going to have him released. Let me have one more go with this one. You do what you want. I'm beyond caring. Hey, what's he in him, man? He's just frustrated, that's all. You know, this is your last chance. Last chance to do what? To come out of this with any credit. To help us nail Sullivan. You know, a couple of hours ago, we found a dead body. James Creighton. Chase is dead. He was about your age, wasn't he? He worked for Sullivan. They were mates. They grew up on the same estate. Sullivan didn't even blink when we told him he was dead. You know, yesterday I was talking to an addict who didn't care whether she was alive or whether she was dead. Her only worry was that she'd run out of body parts to inject herself in. This is the sort of world that you're mixing with. Don't try and tell me that you're not involved. This is just like your mixing desk. No matter how hard you try, your precious life as a DJ is bleeding into Sullivan's drug dealing. All right. I did know he was dealing. I heard him bragging on his mobile. But he never said where he keeps the gear. You've got to believe me, man. Right, OK. Can you help me clear this one, Joy? Um, suppose you have to read a lot to do what you do. It helps. But all your doctor friends are really brainy as well. Oh, some are smarter than others. Is, is that a real bone? It's a cast, but it's from an actual leg bone, yes. Sick. John's heard Sullivan dealing over the phone, and he's willing to testify in court. Fat man of good will do. Unless we find the snack, it'll be his word against Sullivan's. would not even get to court. Maybe the heroine's not here. Maybe Sullivan knew we were coming and moved it. Looks that way. We've had the roof tiles down, and the floor's solid. Probably nothing, but you do know that ain't a reward. We had a power cut once, and Sullivan said all the trick switches are hidden back there. I'm not sure how you're supposed to... Give me the torch. And they say I don't know how to show a boy a good time. <laughs> you know, for a meal, if you like. Nah, don't worry about it. How was your day? Um, pretty dull. It's enlivened by a patient who had facial rash and joint inflammation. I spotted it as uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, but it's just a bit of a tricky one. Oh, listen to me. Well, what's the problem? I'm as interested in lupus as the next man. Well, yeah, but here we are. I've got the whole evening ahead of us. I'm banging on about my latest diagnosis. Look, you've got every right to be pleased when you help a patient. And for the record, when I asked about your day, I meant it. I'm interested. But actually, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to talk to someone and not have to explain all the medical terms. 
Well, we don't quite reach the rarefied heights of you doctors, but I'll try to keep up. You know, the last time I was in a situation like this, oh, you wouldn't believe it. Try me. <laughs> These plates and stuff, do you use them every day? I suppose so. They worth much? I don't know. You don't know? Is it important? No, they're only things. I'm much more interested in people. Don't you like it? Duh. I ain't got any proper food, like, like a pot noodle or something. You can put some salt and pepper on it if you like. Look, it's really important that you don't just eat packet food. You know what? I think Daniel may have left some oven chips in the freezer. I'll just see what I can do. Ah, welcome back. I was wondering where you've gone. One last look at your brother's place. You can't blame me for trying. Well, I'd like to say it was a pleasant distraction, but I think I ought to be getting off, don't you? You know what? I reckon I've been here long enough to warrant an official apology, at least. You know, it's a waste of police resources, your time, my time, you know. I agree. You know, today didn't really turn out as I expected. We found over 20 of these. Each one full of uncut heroin. Every single one of them covered with fingerprints. I wonder who they belong to. Next time, we go for a proper meal. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, we'll have to see these. Oh, okay. No, it's just that um, I'm switching back tonight, so unless you fancy riding shotgun with me during the wee small hours. Yeah. Doesn't sound so bad. Bell me tomorrow. Sure. I'm sorry. Hey, no, don't worry, it's just... I just want to take things one step at a time, is that all right? Yeah, of course. It's, yeah. I've had a great evening, though, thanks. I'll speak to you tomorrow, then. You better. Result? I think so. Look, I know what you're going to say. But now this is sorted. I've got an appointment in half an hour. Good luck. Should have said something earlier. You did the right thing in the end. Sullivan will be charged with importation, intent to supply, and if we can prove that he upped the strength of James Creighton's heroin, then we might get him for murder as well. What next? For me, I mean. Well, I don't know what'll happen over the radio station, but you need to keep your nose clean, whatever happens. You've got your career to think about. Did you listen to the show? Well, uh... Oh, man, what did you think? I'm more, more of a Johnny Cash man myself, come on. Right, chips in the oven, burgers under the grill. Won't be long now. I'm sorry about the spaghetti, but I was just being myself, like you said the other day. I, I know you're trying really hard, but... I just don't belong here, do I? Of course you do. You've got to give it time. This place, it, it's too weird. I, I can't get my head around it. It's, it's OK. I, I didn't mean no, to. No, really, really, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Look, it's just a thing. See? You can repair or replace things. Mending people takes a lot longer. Go on. I can't. Go on, I dare you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Do you still want me to come and live with you? Yes, yes, very much. All right then. I will.
could be your only chance with it. I think I should go. We're going to have a launch party this Friday. We've timed it especially so you can be there. I'm here now to say I'm sorry. But that's not the only reason why you're here, though, is it? Why would an attractive career woman like you want to be with someone so much younger? Don't talk to me as if I were a child. Well, then don't act like one. <laughs>